Today, we're gonna to make the most delicious Guinness beef stew. This one is so good, perfect for St. Patty's Day or any day. Here are all the ingredients. Let's get into it right now. All right, so I always like to go over the ingredients. It helps you a lot. I know it helps you a lot, but it helps me a lot because it's good to prep this way. We have uh, three pounds of chuck roast. You don't wanna use chuck roast? You can use some other beef, but chuck roast is better, so I recommend you do that. We have uh, onions here. So I chop these, you know, pretty thick pieces. Two medium onions, you know, one large onion would be fine. Recipe says three medium carrots. The ones I had were like bigger, so I'm using five like smaller carrots. And it says one inch chunks, but you know, I cut them a little longer because this is so thin here. The thicker ones you can go a little shorter with. Two celery ribs that are just chopped like that. They're about three quarter inch pieces. Three quarter inch is like 18 millimeters. Okay, one bay leaf, large bay leaf, four sprigs of thyme, Worcestershire sauce, or should I say Worcestershire sauce, two tablespoons of that. About four cloves of garlic, minced, you can use more if you like. Three ounces of tomato paste, which is half a can uh, in, in the United States. Star of the show is Guinness. So I have right here, Guinness Drought Stout. This is lower alcohol than the, which one? Extra Stout. Than the Extra Stout. We just want the flavor of the Guinness. One thing I'm not showing here is sugar. We might need to add a little bit of sugar at the end because Guinness tends to be a little bit on the bitter side. We have bacon. The recipe says four slices of bacon. I use six because that's what I have and I don't want to save two slices, so I'm gonna put six in today. This is cooking, guys. You can do this. You can do this. You don't have to listen exactly to what I'm saying. Recipe says three Yukon Gold potatoes. I have four potatoes because I am nuts, okay? I'm gonna do four potatoes, which I think is nice in this. I think by bulking up with these vegetables, it will just feed more of your family. Like you can extend it a lot. So you don't have to stop at four. You could put five potatoes if you want. We have two cups of low sodium beef stock. I'm using beef base, the Better Than Bullion brand. I use it a lot. It's really good. It's very flavorful. This is a really simple dish. You can actually start right now by getting your oven set to 300 degrees Fahrenheit and make enough room to accommodate your Dutch oven with its lid. Prepped most of the ingredients ahead of time, like my chopping all that, but I'll show you the potatoes. Yukon Gold, just like this. And I would say like that and maybe like that, okay? I think that's a good size right there. Okay, same thing down the middle, one, two. Good. Okay, bacon. So I'm cutting pretty large pieces of it. Okay, here we go, chuck roast. Just drying it a little bit more now. Chuck roast normally has this big fat layer in here. You can almost always just like cut right at that point and you can kind of just pull it apart. See that? So like that. Yeah, I'm gonna cut you off here. If you're already gonna tell me, Jim, you should be using every piece of fat here. I disagree with you, okay? You can save all this fat, which you should. You can use it for other dishes, but you do not need to be putting this all of this fat into it. You have the opportunity now just to get rid of this part. I think you should. It's actually a really good looking chuck roast. So you have a choice here. You can make ultra large pieces like this if you like your stew really chunky, but you can make them smaller too. I mean, I, honestly, I think like that is really good. That's how I would cut it too. Yeah. That's perfect. Like that. So, and it's gonna, they're gonna shrink as, as they cook too. You know, you do what you like. I think that's good. So I have an eight quart Dutch oven here. This is a, my big, heavy, uh, large Dutch oven. I'm taking the lid off and turn your heat to a touch less than medium. If you put the heat too high on bacon, it just will burn. Okay, you just go right in with everything. Just try to move it all around to get it like spread out as best you can, and then just let the heat uh, do, do its work. It's gonna take about eight to 10 minutes. We wanna render most of the fat in here. What does that mean? It means like, so this piece right here is all fat. This is all fat. We want this fat to liquefy, and then we're gonna be able to use that fat to sear our beef in. That's it, you're not putting any oil in here. We don't need to. We're gonna be able to use all the bacon fat here. You know, you don't have bacon, you can use oil, but I think the bacon's nice. It makes it, I guess, more Irish. 
Couldn't you also use some of the beef fat that you threw away for people who can't have pork? Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. You can use the beef fat. And uh, to be honest with you, there's so much fat in that beef. You, you don't even really need it. You don't need, even need it. You just sear it. It's all beef. All the fat's going to start going into it. Yeah. This adds a nice flavor to it though. And I, I, you know, I think, I think it's worth it. This has been about five or six minutes on the bacon here. See like, there's still, you know, there's still a good amount of fat in there. So, but a lot of fat now is in coming into the pot. We'll let it go for probably a few more minutes. So while I'm waiting for the bacon, it's almost done. I'm gonna pat this beef really dry over here. I have paper towels. Like even after cutting it, it's only been 10 minutes, a lot of moisture collecting again. So I'll try to get under it, pat it dry. Take more paper towels if you need it. So we can get a little bit of color on the beef when we sear it. Okay, and then salt and pepper on uh, all sides. So I have three pounds of beef here. I'm probably gonna use about three teaspoons of diamond crystal kosher salt. So three teaspoons of that is about 10 grams of salt. Bacon is very salty already. There's the beef stock, everything is salty too. Okay, gonna flip everything and then put it on the other side too. So I did about one and a half on that side. I'll do about one and a half on this side. Okay, and then the pepper. My bacon is pretty good. It's like nice and crisp. Some pieces are, have a little fat in still, but there it is. Try to just drain it. Yeah, you can see how much fat is at the bottom of this pot. So the recipe says to leave four tablespoons worth. It's probably about six. I'm gonna leave it all, it's fine. I'm gonna put the beef in here. It's gonna take probably two batches. You can hear it sizzle when it hits. You wanna get a little bit of color on this. Probably would be better to use a big pan, but two batches it is. Even if I have to crowd a little bit on the next one. It will brown well and coat the bottom of the pot with flavor, lots of flavor. But that is what we want to develop here is a nice uh, color on the bottom. Okay, it's only been a couple minutes, we'll see. That's all right, not, not, not perfect. We'll let it go for a couple more minutes, pull them out and we'll do our second batch. My pot right now, because I did two batches of beef on about medium heat, I'm, I'm barely not even medium, so I'm a little bit below, it's getting very brown almost to the blackish part. Now, if it's black, you will have a burnt sauce. Your whole entire stew will be ruined. We'll deglaze with our onions, we'll taste it. If we mess up, we just lose our onions. That's it, okay? We lost our, the F-O-N-D. Uh -huh. But it's better to lose that than to lose all your beef and your whole dish. Imagine that you spend three hours and then you just, you make a horrible dish and your family's eating it and they're like, ugh. Okay, so I'm gonna remove this beef, and you can see this pot right now, it's very dark down there, but I think it's all right. Okay, pull that beef out. I have just water and a flat spoon, okay? Get your head back. So now what I'm gonna do is, I'll just turn up the heat a little bit because now I have liquid in here, and I'm just gonna remove all this brown bits. There's so much of it, which is a ton of flavor, provided it's not burnt. Okay, so I'm just gonna, I'm removing all of that on the bottom of the pot with this flat edge of this wooden spoon. Okay, so I'm gonna lower back down again and I'm gonna taste it. This is how you know immediately. That tastes delicious. It tastes like bacon and beef that was browned really well. So right here, you could take some of this liquid out or you could just add your onions in and turn up the heat and then your liquid's gonna evaporate into the onions. And I will turn my heat up a little bit so I can get faster evaporation. It's just gonna, that flavor is just gonna go into these onions. Put a little bit of salt, get some of the water out of the onions too. And now our pot bottom is clean. Flavors are great. We're not losing anything. It's all gonna be absorbed into these onions. It's gonna be absorbed into everything else when we combine everything for our stew. Okay, just been a minute. I turn my heat up to almost high. I know most of the liquid now from deglazing is almost evaporated. Once it mostly evaporates, you can lower your heat back down to medium and then continue to cook your onions until they get nice, soft, translucent. Okay, so see, it's all gone. Onions are looking great. You don't have to kill them because it's gonna cook for three hours in the oven, all right? So here's our garlic now. That is four cloves that are minced or chopped. Doesn't make a difference. Let's get it in here for about a minute, two minutes to get nice and fragrant. Okay, if you start to burn it all, lower your heat, add a touch more water, just a touch. That's all you gotta do. I'm showing you how to cook here, not just how to follow a recipe, because this burning pot is easy to do, okay? It's easy to mess this up. Right here, it's starting to get a little bit too much, okay? I'm just gonna touch a water. Back off your heat a little bit, but remember, you're using a large pot. When you lower the heat, it is not gonna, it's not gonna save you, so you gotta put a little bit of water in too. 
Okay, three ounces of tomato paste. That's half a can. Okay, we're gonna fry this together with the onions to just really boost our flavors. Okay, so we fried our paste for a few minutes to really boost the flavor. Our pot is clean because we took care of it. You know, that's what we wanna do. And then here is our Guinness. This is uh, just one 12 ounce of uh, the drought. Okay, let's get it in there. And then let's turn the heat up high right now. So a lot of this is like, you know, you're going up, down, you're managing your heat, you're managing your temp. Okay, so it's coming to a boil. I wanna boil this for about two minutes. I wanna take that flat edge of our wooden spoon again. I always use this flat edge here and I always like to show you so you can just scrape here. So our bottom is completely clean here to lower your heat. Here is the beef and all of those accumulated juices, which is a lot, a ton of juices there. Okay, let's put that in there. Our bacon too, we're gonna put all that bacon in there. Just mix that together a little bit. Our beef stock, this is two cups of low sodium beef stock. This is one large bay leaf. And then here's the time that's tied up. It's about four sprigs. You know, absolutely feel free to use more if you want. To two tablespoons of Worcestershire sauce or Worcester sauce. Mixing this together here again, and then you can just go back to a boil. You didn't even really need to come down. I was just lowered it while I was talking to you. Okay, this is boiling. Turn it off. Wooden spoon again, just make sure nothing is stuck, which we're completely clear. Okay, just push everything down like that. Remember, I told you in the beginning, but I'm telling you again now, 300 degree oven. Okay, cover this. Give a little wipe everything around before you put it into the oven. And then this is gonna go in there for 90 minutes. Okay, it's been an hour and a half on our Guinness beef stew. It smells amazing. Let's take that off, you can see that. Whew. There is a massive amount of fat here, massive amount on top. You can skim some of this now or you can do it all later. It's easier if you do it now, okay? So I like a lot of potatoes in the stew. Carrots, okay, and our celery. Let's just get all like the carrots and celery coated with the fat and the sauce. And then we're gonna put it back in the oven, uncovered, for about another 60 to 80 minutes. Okay, here is the stew. Vegetables are tender. Grab a piece of beef, super tender, okay? So like, falling apart like this, if I just pull it, it'll fall apart. You know, you want it to still maintain some integrity. Potatoes are tender. Carrots are tender, okay? All the good stuff. All right, so we're gonna degrease a little bit and I think we should thicken this up. You can try to get in here. It's a little hard now with all these vegetables. Get some of that fat. That's all fat there, all that. Rather difficult to do that. So if I do the paper towel trick, which a lot of you don't like, what I'm gonna do is just move some stuff off to the side. You can fish out your big bay leaf now too. You don't need that. All right, so let's try to get in here a little bit just like this, I think there's more things to worry about than doing a few paper towels like that. But it will help you to remove a ton of fat very easily. And it's rather hard to do because there's so much stuff here. This stew, like all stews, the best thing to do is to go overnight with it. The proportions here are pretty good. I mean, there's not a ton of liquid in here and I will show you the consistency of it. So I would say there's not that much here. I think it's pretty good like this. What I have here is a tablespoon of cornstarch. We don't need this much, okay? And then a little bit of aqua. I'm just gonna mix that in there. Just mix it together until it's smooth. And then just turn the heat up to high on your burner, or not high, like medium high. You just gotta get bubbles for uh, cornstarch to work, okay? I'm just gonna go with a little bit of it, like that much. That's all we need. Okay, just stir it. And just let the cornstarch get activated by the heat. It only takes about a minute. Okay, and there's the consistency now. Okay, I'm done. Turn it off. Let's do a taste test and season this up. All right, that's the final thing before we bring down the taste tester. Okay, now remember what I told you. We might need sugar here, so that's what we're gonna check for. Oh, I don't think we need any sugar. You know why I don't think we need sugar? I think we have enough carrots in there. I think that really, I think I did the trick. I don't think I need any salt. I'm just gonna do a pinch, but I really don't. I think I season this perfect. I will put pepper in it though. So there, you can always use a little bit of pepper at the end. A little bit of parsley in there. Some of the beef is falling apart. Some of it's nice big chunks. I'm gonna plate this up and bring the taste tester down right now. 
The official taste tester is back. So what are you doing now these days? You're done with basketball. Yeah, I'm doing wrestling. You're doing wrestling? Mm -hmm. Sounds good. So when you wrestle, you need beef stew to bulk up. Let me know what you think. I think I've bulked up a little too much. You bulked up too much? He doesn't like the weight class he's in. He wants it, what you want to drop down, right? Yeah. He's actually better than I expected. Oh, well, thank you. The longer it sits, the better it gets. Yeah, so like I said, this is way better than I expected. I was expecting like, the jambalaya to be way better than this. So oh, that's I think next. This one, yeah. No, it's honestly really good. Like, I like how the beef is kind of like soft. not, yeah, soft. Like it's not just like what, like really big chunks. I don't know what it is, like gravy, it tastes really good. Um, a little sweet? Yeah, with the carrots. It's because of the carrots. Yeah, and potatoes. A lot of bacon in there too. Yeah, I can see that. Can you taste it though or not? Probably not. Kind of. Yeah. It's hard to taste the bacon. It's used more for the fat of uh, searing the meat. But basically everything comes together along with the taste of the Guinness to make this really awesome stew, which by the way, would be way better if it went overnight in the fridge. He's just having this on the same day. Maybe don't eat it all because we got to eat dinner together. You know? Um. So good. <laughs> <laughs> so what do you want? What do you want to give it? I'm gonna give it a 10. Wow, oh, that's like, a good one. Yeah, it's like my first time in a while. All right, well, thank you, James. I mean, that's pretty impressive. I wonder now, uh, maybe I'll get two 10s in a row. Because I think the jambalaya might be even better than that. Yeah, I think it is. Yeah. All right, we'll see you next time.